video scenario for Ryder. Oh, you must send it to me. Uh, you must give it to me. Uh, I, I don't know who they are. I saw somebody when I went down. And we sink and oh, 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 oh. Um, what's his name? Jagat Jyoti. Um, uh, no, tell him it'll have to be after the show now, but I definitely want to see him. Could you say that? Sure. Thanks. Well, I just can't get over what a thrill this is. Darling. But anyway, this oh, is how marvelous. Thank you. Well, so do you, you like to write, do you like to write film? No, 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 no. I've never done anything like You just like dreamed this. it up, right? Just it's just, you, do you know what it's like? Do you know how frustrating? So I'm going to need you to sit back when you... Oh, you okay. That's it. cool. Oh, I shouldn't be like this. Okay, I why shouldn't don't you, be like this. No. Why don't you hold that for me out okay. the out of camera? That's okay. right. Great. No, it's you. a little confining being a fan for 30 years. It's yeah. like you just, you're always receiving. And I want you to <sighs> be able to Thank give you. something back. You're welcome. Thank so, you. because this will be on a newscast, I have to ask you sort of boring questions. That's okay. Oh, okay. You want to roll? We, yeah, we'll roll. Um, Hello. Hello, Donovan. How are you? Very well. I'm really pleased that you asked me to come and speak to you, really. Well, I'm so pleased that you came to speak to us. Thank you. And I'm sure most of Boston And is. all of you, of course. Um, so, how has the reception been, the response been to this promotional tour? Well, my new album, Sutras, uh, I'm really proud of it. Rick Rubin, my producer, and I have oh, just... Looking over to her. I'm sorry. Oh? We keep, keep looking over to Arlene. Oh, okay. Not the camera. It's painful oh, okay. as it may be for you. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'll start again. Okay. No, no, we can talk like this, sure. Oh, yeah. okay, great. My new album, Sutras? Well, uh, I'm, first I'm asking, hmm. how has the public response been to you and your promotional tour? Okay. And, appearances? Well, so far, very, very nice. People like you who asked me to speak to the media, uh, they wanted to like my new album, but they were surprised how much they did like it. Now, that makes one feel very nice mm -hmm. and very welcome. And so far, it's only been released in October in America, mm -hmm. so the response from the public is slowly coming in. Oh, that's great. Now, are you getting, what kinds of people are you getting at your public appearances? Is it mostly old farts like myself, or are you getting a younger group well, of people? <laughs> well, what is happening is the performances are very little, not, not many at all, because I'm speaking to the press, the television, the radio. Oh, oh. But in the performances that I do do, which uh, I did in New York and Los Angeles, uh, I presented the songs to my fans and to the media, uh, all ages, all ages, which is how it was in the beginning. Yeah, all ages especially teenagers so who have uh, discovered me through their parents, perhaps. Oh, yes. Or perhaps have discovered me, yes. which is a great buzz. And of course, my own fans that have followed me have come to the shows, yeah. Um, all right, I have to ask you this. I know you've been asked every time you've been interviewed, but this is what everyone wants to know, and that's, what have you been doing the past 25 years? Oh, a hard one to, to thumbnail sketch. And make it snappy. Yeah, of no. course. No, I understand. So, uh, I've, I've, I've got this book for, for that reason, to give some insight into the, my adventures in obscurity. And the book is coming out next year, I, I hope. And, and I'm threatening to finish this book <laughs> next year. Uh, and what I'm going to do is give you a thumbnail sketch. You know, I have three periods in the last 20 years. Like The first one was extraordinary mm -hmm. because I, was, I walked away from fame at in 1917 mm -hmm. and ran magically into my teenage muse Linda Lawrence and married mm -hmm. and we had a family. And so the in the 70s I made nine albums mm -hmm. but not much touring. Uh, we had children, we lived in the California nine desert. Nine albums in the 70s? Yes, but See? they were developed uh, themes of mine, but not pop records. They were themes that I was developing on my own. They didn't have a lot of success after 73, my albums. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't uh, on my knees crying because of it, because I'd had enough success, right, right. and I was exhausted. So I really needed a change, and the change was family, and, uh, mm -hmm. and Linda and I, we had family, and we, all the way through the 70s, I was very private with occasional tours. I lived in California till 78. In, in the high desert in a place called Joshua Tree, yeah. a magical high desert area south of Los Angeles. Uh, famous now for the uh, U2 right. Joshua Tree album and for the place where Graham Parsons, the great singer-songwriter, mm -hmm. died. And, but we lived there and we enjoyed that. We moved back to e uh, England to raise the children in English schools in, from 78 to 83 mm -hmm. and continued to make albums in the 80s, three more. And then 
returned to the desert and stopped recording completely. And it was a personal crisis for me from 83 to 89. My age, it was my age, but also my musical uh, watershed of some kind. Come, my my uh, creativity was continuing, but I felt out of touch or my response to an audience was missing. My w music works much better in response. Then the 90s came round, and I moved back to Ireland. And Linda turned on the television, and just like this whole life expo, personal, de personal growth movement in the 90s was full of all the themes from my songs. It's as if masses of people had caught up with, with uh, uh, movements that the 60s began and went underground in the 70s and it was still underground in the 80s and then came pouring out in the 90s so I could respond again. So I felt much better about that and, and started writing more and more and started looking for a record deal about 92. So that gives a thumbnail sketch. I'm dizzy. How are you? <laughs> 20 years is a long time. Yeah. Oh, it is. Yeah. But, you know. but here I am. But here you are, and yeah. you know, there's a lot of people happy because of that. I'm glad. I'm feeling you know, welcome back. Yeah. Oh, really? I mean, I did read where you said that you went through the same typical sort of depression when you entered your forties. Yeah, everybody does. And you know, yeah. you weren't listening to music much. And no. But you know, and then I thought, what about me? I wasn't listening to music much either. I'm no. listening to your stuff from 1965, and I'm Great. getting depressed because. Yes. I'm not listening to anything. Uh, it's, a, so, it's a change of life, and uh, we go through these changes. Right. And they're part of the, 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 the adventure, right. basically. No, I, I mm. actually I haven't shared the experience of being mm. depressed yet. But mm. um, that leads me to something else. And your s transcendental meditation and your studying of Buddhism and mm. Hinduism. Mm. I wanted to ask you if you think a person can attain fulfillment and peace of mind and happiness without using any of those things, without transcendental med Can a person be fulfilled? Uh, yes, of course. There are beings walking around that are actually centered and, uh, and egoless, and they're very few, and they're like angels, really. But most of us are actually caught up in this illusion that the Buddhists speak of. Mm -hmm. We, in actual fact, uh, the true reality, what meditation is, a, is a attempting to do, mm -hmm. is to break through to the true reality, because we're living in, a, in an illusion called maya. Mm -hmm. And this illusion drives us to, to extraordinary ends, to try and fulfill desires, to, to try and adjust to life. And in this modern age, they call it psychotherapy, which uh, yeah. tries to sort out yeah. these difficulties that s people have in different, in different ways. Mm -hmm. And so this illusion that is going on has always fascinated me because it seems so real. And meditation is a path through all this illusion. And I, I, it can be extremely helpful in reducing stress in the late 20th century, right. apart from being a spiritual path. Right. Okay. Now, how are your parents doing? I My mother and father. Yeah, uh, can you tell us about them? Well, they're still alive. Uh, yes. Maybe they'll be passing into the Bardo, which is the Tibetan world for, for that period between death and rebirth, because I believe in reincarnation, mm -hmm. of course. Right. Uh, but what it do will you think be. you'll come back as? Oh, my gosh, I don't know. Uh, there's many beliefs of what one comes. If you believe in reincarnation, uh, I'll tell you a story, shall okay. I? Oh, okay. Yes. Um, I have a friend called Ro uh, Romeo, it sounds Italian, but he's Nepalese. Mm -hmm. He's a painter and he lives in Ireland. When, yeah. he, when he was four, he married an Irish girl re and he's got an Irish Nepalese baby, right? But when he m was four, he was in a small Nepalese village, uh, poor. His mother and father didn't have anything. And there was a knock on the door one day and two Tibetan monks were there. And his parents looked at these monks, wondering what they wanted. The two Tibetan monks said, these, this box of paints, is your son. We found the painter, huh. the great painter that used to paint in our monastery. He's been reborn and he's your son. These are his paints. When he's old enough, give them to him. He'll remember. Wow. So this box of paints cost more than three years' wages for this family, mm -hmm. but they held on to them. And the boy carried them. And he went to America to study and he went to Europe to study and he rejected that he was a painter. One day he picked up the box of paints and started painting. And now he's the finest Tanka Tibetan artist that's been known in the Western world. So 
Things like that yeah. are interesting. Yeah. Now, where he got reborn, I don't know. But these Tibetan monks seem to be able to find these people. However they do it, I don't know. But it usually yeah. takes four to six years. And that's how they find the Dalai Lama. Every time he right. dies, they yeah. find him again somewhere. So I'm a believer in this. So my mother and father, are, for their age, they're bright, they're, they're, they're well enough as can be expected, but they're over 80. Mm -hmm. My father is bright as a new pin, when, and wow. uh, uh, it's great. So it's yeah. nice to see them and know them very well, uh, just as they're getting into these years. Right. And I'll feel great loss, and I don't treat it frivolously. Oh, right, no. But I know that what, what I'm feeling is hope, hopefully I'll see them again. Who knows? Yes, that's 